Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Super excited to have you all here at this virtual college fair for the Counselors Academy of the Jewish University Experience. My name is Sabel. I will be your facilitator for this evening's session, and I'm extremely excited to get started. I do have a few housekeeping items before we do, but we have some absolutely amazing universities and colleges here to tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, I do want to preface this by saying we only have about 45 minutes in this session, so I like to call this an appetizer session. It is a little bit of each university, but it is up to you to make sure you grab these panelists' uh, contact information uh, or check out the websites, you know, visit these schools, and just check them out because ultimately you want to figure out what your main entree is going to be, but it is an appetizer session. So let's get started. But again, these housekeeping items, a couple of things to keep in mind. Remember, this is a webinar style format, which means that you are muted and your video is turned off. The panelists cannot see or hear you. So you're probably like, well, Sabelle, I have some questions. How in the world do I ask them? Great question. You're going to use your Q&A button. So if you look at your Zoom toolbar, you will see towards the middle a Q&A button in which you will click and type your questions to the presenters at any time. Very important two things I want to point out. Please do not uh, wait until the last minute to ask those questions. These panelists and presenters are going to be here for about 40 to 45 minutes. So we want to make sure if you get your uh, questions answered, we want to make sure that we get them all in in that session. So please ask them throughout. Also, if you could please put the school's name within the question, that would be awesome as well. So we all know who the question goes to. Uh, another thing to keep a lookout for is the chat. The chat function is only a one-way bulletin board, so our panelists could be putting their contact information, phone number, website, something like that in there. So you want to check out the chat once in a while, too. Sign up for more sessions. This is one out of many, many college presentations that are offered, so please check the schedule on the website for more of these sessions. And last but not least, maybe mom missed out on today's session or a friend wants to check out these schools with you. Or you know what, maybe you just want to relive the fun with us. You absolutely can do so and we recommend it because guess what, all these sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Jewish Student Fair. With that said, you all, I would love to get started with our first school up for this evening's session, University of Massachusetts Amherst. Good evening. Thank you so much. My name is Rachel Mason. I am the Associate Director of First Year Recruitment here at UMass Amherst. I'm also an unapologetically enthusiastic alum of the university, and I'm so grateful that I have this time to speak with you tonight. First, I'd like to speak a little bit about UMass Amherst. We are the flagship university for the Massachusetts University system. We are ranked as one of the top 26 public universities in the United States. Uh, that is because of not only the research opportunities and academic experience on campus, but the vibrant community that we have, not only in terms of the university itself, but in our surrounding towns and cities. We are very proud of the fact that we are number one dining five years in a row, according to Princeton Review. Not only do we have amazing food that tastes great, but it is incredibly integral in terms of our community, uh, utilizing locally resourced products um, and meeting the dietary needs of our students, whether that be uh, specific needs, uh, including, of course, kosher food. We have a lot of different ways that we have been recognized, including being one of the top 20 cool schools by the Sierra Club. That is a reflection of our commitment to the environment and a sustainable actions and is a part of our 20-year plan to be carbon neutral. We've also been recognized as one of the top LGBTQ friendly universities. Our Stonewall Center is a great resource for our students. Also so important, our faculty are our most uh, critical piece of the entire campus in addition to our students, uh, and 12 of them are among the most cited researchers in the world. So truly a, a diverse as well as deep uh, academic uh, resources for our students. Amherst itself is that quintessential college town, a lot going on in it with UMass right there at the center. Uh, it's a beautiful campus and within minutes of many different cities and activities all around you. Our students do come from not only the Commonwealth, but all over the country. 
when we are in session, we are nearly 30,000 students strong. So we are our own little city within uh, this amazing agricultural valley with lots of recreational opportunities for our students. We offer more than 100 majors in our 10 schools and colleges, really providing our students not only with a comprehensive academic experience within the classroom, but then also lots of opportunities to participate in research, internships, and co-ops to really allow them to take their learning and begin to apply it. Uh, at UMass, we pride ourselves on the fact that we are having an impact on not only our campus, but our community looking to really answer some deep questions. And that is facilitated by our faculty who are accessible to our students. Yes, we are large, but on average uh, class sizes uh, come in about 36 students. We have uh, small courses as well as the opportunity to uh, learn in larger settings. We are a research powerhouse, uh, Carnegie rated in terms of research funding within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We are third only to Harvard and MIT. So very good company to be in, in my uh, estimation. For those students who would like to study and graduate with honors, we have the Commonwealth Honors College as well. We are a diverse, and welcoming group uh, with nearly 22,000 undergraduate students coming from many different backgrounds, including uh, nearly 30% underrepresented, 21% uh, are first in their family to attend college or first gen. These are important, not only in terms of the diversity that it brings to our campus, but also because of our commitment to ensure that our students who enroll also go on to graduate. And we've been recognized for our work with these communities. In terms of uh, the living on campus, all of our first year students live on campus. It's a guaranteed housing. It's an important part of the UMass experience. There's a lot of investment that has been going on for our uh, campus. We have had a lot of um, uh, upgrading, nearly $2 billion invested in different buildings. Worcester Dining Commons is my personal favorite. Um, also, my daughter loves to go there because we make sushi every night. Uh, the Commonwealth Honors College provides a residential community. Um, great opportunities. Just a lot of vibrant buildings on campus uh, to make sure that we are providing our students with the best experience possible. In terms of Jesus life and resources at UMass Amherst, uh, we are, they mentioned, a diverse and supportive community. We have numerous opportunities for students to uh, pursue and to support their religious as well as cultural uh, activities. Cornerstones for us would be the UMass Hillel House as well as the Shabbat House. Hillel, of course, is our more pluralistic community, uh, offering a lot of activities for our students throughout the year. I think important to note, um, for six years now, UMass Hillel has been um, recognized by the William Haber Award for Outstanding program Programming. Uh, so that is it's a distinction that we are very, very proud of. We also have a Jewish learning initiative on campus, JLIC. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Rabbi Rafi was unable to join us tonight, but would be very happy to answer any questions that you may have. Feel free to, to reach out to him. Numerous organizations to pick from. Actually, UMass Amherst itself has over 400 student organizations, uh, and I believe that our Jewish uh, student organizations fall around in about 20 or 30, so a significant portion of that, that group. Um, and of course, there is kosher meals that are available to our students throughout. It has been a pleasure speaking with you tonight. And uh, I certainly hope that you consider UMass Amherst as you pursue your college uh, experience. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. If you have any questions for UMass Amherst, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Franklin and Marshall College. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Matt Arant. I am one of the assistant directors of a regional mission uh, here at Franklin Marshall College, which means I'm not actually based on campus. I am based in the Austin, Texas area, and I cover most of the South uh, Southern United States. In addition to this, I am the primary liaison to Hillel. And so I'll talk about a couple minutes, just kind of give the brief overview of FNM, kind of the school itself. I'm lucky to, lucky to be joined by our actual Hillel president, Molly Lebeau, who will kind of speak briefly on the Jewish experience at FNM as well. So FNM is kind of that classic liberal arts college, all undergraduate. So it's about 2,200 uh, students come from over 40 states and uh, 40 countries. We're located in Pennsylvania, so as you might imagine, most of our students do, do come from the Northeast, 
whether it's DC on up to Boston, but we have pockets all over the country, whether it's South Florida, it's Southern California, it's Chicago, it's Denver, it's Houston, it's uh, Seattle. Like it's very much a cosmopolitan campus. Additionally, one of the highest per capita international populations in the country, about 20% of our students are international. So we have students really coming from all corners of the globe, which really enriches the uh, academic environment of being a small class size environment, all undergraduate, no graduate assistants or teaching assistants, which means you have classes that are very much a seminar discussion as opposed to a lecture style, which further enriches your skills that you're learning at a liberal arts uh, program. Additionally, offer extensive research opportunities for our students because kind of at first glance, liberal arts college and research don't usually kind of go together in terms of like, in like the popular psyche. But in fact, with, since our, our students are involved in so much research on campus because of the fact that it's all undergraduate. Larger schools, sometimes you have to kind of uh, jockey against grad students and upper class students. At FNM, you can really start as soon as you get to campus. So it's really a great way for you to take advantage of those uh, opportunities uh, there. Initially, study abroad, half our students do this. They pretty much go wherever, uh, wherever they want, all seven continents. So it's surprising. We do have students that do study abroad outside of like the normal area. So it's really kind of a great way for you to incorporate what you're learning on campus with a more globalist uh, perspective. Uh, Division three athletics, uh, 27 sports. Uh, Greek life is pretty popular as well. About 40% of our students are involved in uh, Greek life. Over 100 uh, clubs and organizations. Lancaster itself is kind of a unique uh, area. It's about three hours uh, from New York City, which is about two hours from uh, DC, Baltimore, about five or six from Boston. So it's really accessible as major East Coast hubs. We also have an Amtrak station. It's about a 10 minute walk from campus. So students aren't stuck on campus. They're able to really explore the outside world as well as our downtown, which is really kind of a hipster, hipsterish spot uh, for our students to really take advantage of as well. Quickly, one last thing about the process. We're test optional, we've been test optional long before COVID. So we know I look at those applications without test scores, holistic review. Uh, we have early decision, regular decision, which I'm sure that might come up in the, the Q&A later, but I don't wanna to take too much of, more of your time. I wanna bring it over to Molly to kind of share some uh, Jewish life specific things uh, FNM offers our students. Thank you so much, Matt. Hi, everyone. My name is Molly, and I'm the current Hillel president and an incoming senior at FNM. And Hillel has really been a huge part of my college experience and really made FNM feel like a home to me. At Franklin and Marshall, we have a lot of different options for Jewish students. We also have the kosher food option of Kivo that's located in the dining hall. And they're really amazing and work with all students and have a lot of options. And our Hillel is ho housed in the Clare Center. And the Clare Center is a really welcoming place that a lot of students come to and we'll just do homework together. It's a very nice living room space that we have Shabbat together, um, but it's a really welcoming place that students from all different backgrounds are able to come to. And Hillel offers a lot of different programming every week for students. We have weekly challah making as well as Shabbat dinners every week. And then we have bagel brunches on a bi-weekly basis. And then we have a lot of other different social events that happen throughout the weeks, such as movie nights, craft nights, anything like that. Really anything that students want to have, we make possible. And we've also been working on a lot of more social action projects. We get out in the city of Lancaster and make sure we're giving back to the community. And students become very involved at FNM Hillel. It's such a welcoming environment that students immediately want to come and help out. And FNM also has a variety of amazing Judaic studies and Hebrew classes, and the department is super strong and there are many amazing professors. And these classes are usually small as well as many of the other classes at FNM, but it really allows students to be really creative and work together in a collaborative environment. And if you have any further questions about FNM Jewish life or FNM in general, please feel free to leave questions in the chat. All right, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have any questions in regarding uh, to Franklin and Marshall College, please put it in the Q&A. And next up we have the City University of New York. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here tonight, uh, joining my colleagues and all of the uh, participants. My voice is going out on me, so I'm gonna try to keep this brief. I only have a couple of uh, slides shows to, to show you and, um, and share um, you know, general information about the City University of New York, also known as the 
greatest uh, university in the world. I know that's a tall order, uh, but New York being New York and the public university system of, of CUNY having a um, long tradition of over 170 years old, uh, you know, we do pride ourselves in the type of institution and the mission that started this uh, uh, university back in 1847, which is uh, at the time, at the time was um, a free, excellent education to all. Um, that has changed, of course, over the years, starting in the 1970s, tuition started be, uh, being charged. But for many decades, uh, many of the colleges that compose the City University of New York um, have graduated generations after generations of professionals, not just in New York City, but across the United States and the world. Um, my job as an admissions counselor and recruiter is to visit the, the high schools in New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Connecticut. I am the friendly tri-state uh, recruiter. Um, and I work uh, hand in hand with your college guidance counselors and yourself, uh, given the opportunity to interact with you one-on-one -on -one provides me the opportunity to give you excellent service in, in learning what it's basically a giant public system uh, of admissions, which uh, requires you to um, basically uh, keep track of the different deadlines that we have uh, so that you don't miss out an opportunity to be admitted with one of the 25 uh, excellent uh, institutions that make up the City University of New York. I'm gonna switch to my slideshow to um, show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, one second. Oh. Hey kids, I'm sorry. There you go. Uh, the Empire State Building right on 34th Street and 5th Avenue, my office, the central office of admissions for undergraduate admissions is located within a few blocks uh, of this beautiful building uh, in, in Midtown. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are known as the greatest university system in the world. Our university is composed of 25 different colleges, 18 of them offering undergraduate degrees, 1,750 different majors and programs. We have a tool, we have a website to help you help that uh, narrow down so many choices. And we do that by hopefully guiding you to the right school for you, depending on your interest. 20,000 faculty members, many award recipients of prestigious uh, national and international awards, um, they are the backbone of our institution, their education to public institution and their field of uh, expertise is what makes CUNY one of the best universities in the world. 275,000 degree students every year with um, adult education and ESL students, our class, our campuses can sometimes hold up to 400,000 people in, during one semester. So lots, it's a big system and of course, uh, lots of graduates. Alumni, it's huge, one million plus. I'm going to quickly show you a, the location of some of our um, institutions, there are 25 of them, as I mentioned, 18 of them offer undergraduate degrees. And among them, you will find some of the popular CUNY schools for uh, students looking for a vibrant Jewish life in the city of New York. They include Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens College, Baruch College, Hunter City College Uptown, and Lehman College in the Bronx. Uh, these institutions are within walking distance to public transportation. And here's a quick sample of some of the majors that uh, are offered um, at CUNY. As I mentioned before, uh, we have a tool available to help you uh, narrow down your choice. Uh, as an undergraduate freshman applicant, uh, freshman application gives you an opportunity to select six of them. Uh, on your application, including the Macaulay Honors Program, which is the dual honors program at CUNY, uh, uh, CUNY offering for in-state students a full ride. Um, students graduate with two degrees, one as an honors, Macaulay Honors graduate, one from the campus they select to attend in person. As I mentioned before, seven different uh, of these colleges offer a vibrant Jewish life experience through 
uh, the Hillel programs, offering the traditional prayer services, community services, gap year in Israel, and other services as well, um, including food services. My favorite is the cafeteria, the kosher cafeteria at Brooklyn College, where I'm a proud graduate. Um, and But of course, uh, different services uh, helping you connect to the uh, community. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be sharing with you tonight. I'm going to type quickly type my uh, email on the chat room so that you can contact me for any other questions that you may have. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for the City University of New York, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Center College. Hello, my name is David DeWitt. I am an Associate Director of Admission here at Center College and appreciate the opportunity uh, to be able to be part of this particular college fair. I'm going to give you a brief introduction uh, to the school I work at, and then I'm going to turn it over to my colleague who is on the religion faculty at Center. Uh, I'm going to attempt to, well, that's not working right. Going to attempt to share my screen. Hey, Eddie, if your share, if your screen is still shared, can you unshare it for me, please? Thank you. Oh, there we go. And well, perhaps I'm not going to share my screen the way I thought I was going to. David, if, if you want to take a few seconds and, and go ahead and try and share your screen, that's fine. Um, if if uh, Shanna or Shauna, I'm sorry, if you want to start speaking while he's figuring it that out, oh, that might work out. I'll I'll just talk. I apologize. Okay, that's fine. No technical. problem. I thought I had it all situated there. Um, the things I would want you to know about Center College. Uh, is that we, uh, we're a small private college. We're located right in the middle of Kentucky. Uh, the town we're in is Danville. Danville is not a big city, uh, but it's a very vibrant uh, community and a very nice place for a, a liberal arts college. We have a total enrollment of about 1,400 students, uh, entirely undergraduate uh, institution. Uh, we offer no graduate degrees. And one of the things that means is that uh, undergraduates get a lot of personal attention from the faculty at Center College. And those that I was basically going to show you pictures of that <laughs> happening on our campus. Uh, but uh, Center has a very traditional orientation to the liberal arts and sciences. Majors tend to be in broad areas. The college was founded in 1819. Um, it would not surprise me if many of you have, have are unfamiliar with Center College. Uh, but it is a place that uh, is well respected. Uh, we're considered a national liberal arts college by US News and World Report and are ranked in their top tier of national liberal arts colleges. We make a promise to students who enroll. Um, check my timer here. We make a promise to students who enroll that you will have an opportunity to study abroad and complete an internship or mentored research experience and finish your degree in four years. And if you can't fit all that together in four years, we will cover a fifth year for you tuition free. 85% of our students study abroad at least once in locations all over the world. And about 35% of our students find a way to fit more than one study abroad experience into their time with us. One other thing I would mention to you, uh, we have an office uh, uh, devoted to helping students earn fellowships, both graduate and undergraduate fellowships. Uh, we have a really fine track record in that. I will hit a couple of highlights. I actually don't have statistics for the current graduate, for the this year's graduating seniors, but in 2021, we had three Fulbright scholars. Uh, we uh, had uh, one person uh, in 2019 get a Gates Cambridge scholarship. Um, the JET JET program, uh, which uh, is a teaching fellowship in Japan, we had three 1921 graduates earned that. Uh, the Marshall Scholarship, which is similar to the Rhodes, except that it's uh, for one to three years of graduate study in any major university in the United Kingdom. Uh, one of our 1921 graduates was named an alternate there. Uh, we, we have had Rhodes Scholars at Center. Uh, the last was in 2009. 
but we did, uh, but we got very close two years ago uh, with a candidate who nearly made it and, and on it goes. I want to turn my time over now to my colleague, uh, Dr. Shana Shepman uh, on the religion faculty at Center College. Hi, um, so I, I just, I, I know we are short on time, but I wanna tell you that I too had no idea where Center College was when I, um, when I, when I uh, left my previous job at Carleton College, my husband, I will be honest, took a job as a rabbi in Lexington, Kentucky, and I was um, asked to apply for a job here. Um, so I, I went to Barnard and Harvard and Columbia where I got my PhD. So I, I know all of you are on the East Coast, um, but I will tell you that actually Kentucky is a really wonderful place to be. Um, and Center is a remarkable institution when it comes to the uh, intimate relationships between faculty and students. And um, I have just received the uh, $107,000 grant from the Jewish Heritage Fund, which is um, for two years. Um, and I'm really working and building. And as a college, we're committed to building um, both Jewish studies and Jewish life on campus. I'm not going to lie. We do not have a lot of Jewish students, right? We, But we have a wonderful group of Jewish students who are um, and a rabbinic intern who comes six times a year. Um, and we are really, really um, focused on building, sort of bringing understanding of different kinds of Jewish life to campus. So for example, um, we had this year in residence, um, an, the Indian Jewish artist, Siona Benjamin, who came and students worked with her intimately over the course of um, two visits and learned about the Indian Jewish community and studied it. We had, um, uh, next year we'll have Vanessa Paloma who works on Moroccan and Sephardi music um, and um, probably Yair Dalal the following year who's an Israeli who does um, Iraqi Jewish music. Um, and we're, we're bringing in artists and scholars to think about things we've, um, so we're, we're really committed in that way. A colleague and I uh, took a group of students to Israel for a center term, which is our January term, um, a three week intensive course. Um, and it was my Islamic studies colleagues. So we, we thought about Jewish, uh, Christian and um, Muslim uh, histories in, in, um, in Israel. Um, and we also then, um, I'm this year doing a trip in Kenya um, with an, another colleague on religious diversity there. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea about, about where we are and what we're doing. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. I think, I think we need to yield the floor now. <laughs> awesome, thank you so, so much. If you have any questions for Center College, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Rochester Institute of Technology. Hey, good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Molly Lane. I'm a senior assistant director um, in the undergraduate admissions office at Rochester Institute of Technology or RIT. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is just an overview of the RIT community. So our main campus is located in a suburban area of Rochester called Henrietta, which is about six miles outside of Rochester in upstate New York. Uh, the student population at the Rochester campus is just under 17,000 students. And if you include our international campuses in Croatia, Dubai, Kosovo, and China, our total enrollment is over 19,000 students, which makes us one of the largest universities in the country. Um, RIT is also home to the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, which was the very first um, deaf or hard of hearing college in the country. And that includes over 900 students who are um, taking classes and um, attending RIT as well. Um, so all 50 states, about 90 different countries are represented at RIT. And then even though RIT is a big school, um, our average class size is about 22 students and the student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Um, all classes are also taught by faculty, which we feel is really important. 
Um, even though we have the word technology in the name of our school, we have so much more to offer students um, outside of that. RIT is home to nine academic colleges, including NTID, and we offer close to 90 majors and 100 minors. So we have programs in everything from engineering, science, computing, game design, health sciences, and engineering technology to art design, film and animation, photography, liberal arts, and business. So tons of different program areas. We also offer 50 um, accelerated dual degree programs, such as the four plus one MBA program through our College of Business. Um, we are proud to offer um, the one of the largest and oldest um, co-op programs in the country. Um, experiential learning is a really big part of coming to RIT. So in the forms of undergraduate research, study abroad, clinical rotations, internships, um, but co-op or cooperative education is really a big deal at RIT. Um, internships are usually uh, maybe full or part-time. Sometimes they're not paid, but co-ops are always a full-time job experience that's uh, paid in your field. About 80% of our majors um, require co-op from students and RIT has one of the, the biggest programs in the world with about 3,400 employer partners um, in 50 states and 30 different countries. So you'd hopefully expect from a co-op school that um, the experience you're getting is really gonna pay off in the end and it does. So for our class of 2020, our outcome rate was 92%. And here you can see a small sampling of some of the major employer partners that we do work with. Um, you can find more specific information about this about um, for all of our programs on our website as well. Because we're such a big school, uh, campus life is really um, vibrant. We have um, over 330 active clubs ranging from academic, religious, environmental. Um, and we also host about 1300 events every year. Students can also join Greek life. We have 29 participating organizations in that um, and several traditions and events that happen yearly, um, including the Mud Tug, Brick City Homecoming, Freeze Fest, Spring Fest, and our annual signature festival, Imagine RIT. Um, for students interested in sports, we do have 22 intercollegiate teams, at, um, mostly at the Division Three level, although we are Division One for men's and women's ice hockey. Um, we also have intramural sports for students to play um, if they're interested in just having fun. Um, and one of RIT's goals is to grow our performing arts opportunities for students on campus. And we have over a thousand students that participate in performing arts. Um, and we do offer a performing arts scholarship as well. So to touch on Jewish life at RIT, we have a very active Shabbat and Halal organization um, as part of our campus in the Center for Religious Life. Some highlights include um, Passover seders, uh, Purim parties, Hanukkah celebrations, and other fellowship opportunities such as movie and game nights. There's a Jewish Life um, Advisory Council here on campus to help with special campus initiatives for enhancing Jewish life at RIT. And we're pleased to announce a brand new kosher deli that's opening on campus in the next academic year. Um, so just to wrap things up, I'm going to talk briefly about the admissions process. We do review students for admission based on their intended major. Um, so a practice we call differential admission. For example, what we're looking for from a STEM applicant is uh, very different than maybe someone applying to art design or liberal arts. When our admissions committee reviews applications, we do use a holistic ap application review. So we look at everything that's sent, um, but no matter what program you're applying to, the most important factor is your day-to-day -day academic record or your transcript. We are test optional at RIT, so it's your choice whether you submit SAT or ACT scores, and we'll also consider other factors um, such as recommendations, extracurricular involvement, art portfolios um, for students applying to art, design, and film and animation. Um, so to wrap it up, I'd like to share my contact information here. I'm also going to put it in the chat and ways to connect with RIT in the future. You're welcome to sign up for our admissions website um, for small group tours, information sessions, virtual tours, or interviews with um, admissions counselors. And then we'll also be offering in-person and virtual open houses in the fall. So um, thank you for joining us and I'll put my contact information in the chat. Awesome, thank you so, so much. If you have any questions for Rochester Institute of Technology, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Columbia University General Studies and International Programs. 
Hi, nice to see everyone. I think I'll just wait for RAT to sh stop sharing their screen so I can go ahead and share mine. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, in the meantime, I'll just introduce myself. Awesome. My name is Lindsay. Um, I always say save the best for last, uh, but also maybe everybody's tired. So I'll try and make this brief. Um, let me just go ahead and share my screen real quick. All right, trying to share a portion of this again, should know what I'm doing usually don't. Um, so wanted to thank everybody um, for taking the time, you know, to listen to all of us today. I definitely learned a lot about all of my fellow colleges. Um, so I'm here on behalf of Columbia University and the School of General Studies. Please, so sorry about all of this. Um, all right, I think we finally have it. All right, so I represent our international um, dual degree programs at Columbia. So we're part of um, the School of General Studies. Columbia University undergrad is made up of um, four different undergraduate colleges. There's Columbia College, there's um, Barnard College, there's the School of Engineering and Applied Science, and then my favorite, which is Columbia School of General Studies. Um, so what I am here to talk about specifically, though, are our international dual degree programs. Um, so at Columbia, we actually offer for three different undergraduate um, dual degree programs. We have one with Sales Po um, and Columbia University in France, one with Trinity College Dublin in Ireland, and then our newest one, which is with Tel Aviv University um, between Tel Aviv and Columbia. So what is a dual degree? I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. Um, but just to kind of give you a little bit of, of our, our background and something specifically related to Jewish life, um, at Columbia, we've actually been running joint and dual degree programs since 1954. Um, our first joint degree program was with LIST, um, the Jewish Theological Seminary. We still have that dual degree program as well. And I believe, I think they're doing one of the presentations later. Um, but I'm here to specifically talk about our international dual degree programs. And we don't have time to talk about all three of them. So I figured that the best thing to do um, would be to talk specifically about our um, dual degree with Tel Aviv University in Israel. Um, just keep in mind if you're interested in our other programs, so Samuels Po and Trinity, they follow the exact same structure as the Tel Aviv program. So the idea behind these international programs is that you spend your first two years abroad, your second two years at Columbia. At the end of four years, you graduate with two bachelor's of arts degrees. So we've partnered with other schools around the world that we think are similar to Columbia in terms of rigor, ethos, experience. And so we decided to partner with um, Tel Aviv University in Israel. We just admitted our third class um, to the dual degree program, so it's still relatively new. Now, Tel Aviv is um, a liberal arts institution, and we have a partnership specifically with what's called Tel Aviv International, which is the English language um, portion of Tel Aviv University, not the larger Hebrew speaking um, portion. And the partnership is with the bachelors um, in liberal arts. So there's eight different majors that you can choose from at Tel Aviv, a variety of humanities, arts, and social sciences programs. You can choose any one of those majors. And then when you come to Columbia for years three and four, Columbia is also a liberal arts institution. Um, some people might not um, understand that we are, but we are. We have over 80 different majors for students to choose from. Students in our Tel Aviv University dual degree have access to any one of our majors at Columbia. So it's a very um, kind of broad-based program with lots of different academic options. But the main takeaway here, years one and two um, at Tel Aviv University, years three and four at Columbia, variety of liberal arts majors to choose from. You graduate with two bachelors of arts degrees. So that's kind of the academic layout. Um, I don't have time to go into the broad variety um, of student life activities available at both institutions. Suffice to say, they're both located in major cities. Um, in Tel Aviv, there's no shortage of things for students to do. And then at Columbia either, also a major city. Um, tons of opportunities, happy to talk about those further. But I did want to just highlight a couple of the Jewish life options at both institutions. Um, it's important to know that at Tel Aviv, the academic calendar does respect Jewish and is Jewish and Israeli holidays. And that's really nice because it's built into the academic calendar. So it actually starts a little bit later in the fall and ends a little bit later in the spring. There's daily prayers held at the synagogue. There's a Bet Midrash with Judaic resources on campus. There's actually a Judaica museum and a Jewish heritage center. There is the TAU Hillel. And then all of the campus food is kosher. And then at Columbia, you can continue on with Hillel. We have our craft center. Um, we do have a Bet Midrash on campus. We also have 
daily prayers, Shabbat dinners. Um, all Jewish holidays are celebrated. Every denomination is welcome on campus. Um, we also, similar to the Jewish Heritage Center at TAU, have the Institute for Israel and Jewish Studies and the Jewish Theological Seminary that I just mentioned. And kosher meal plans and options are available. So hopefully that just gives you a little bit of taste of kind of the student life and Jewish life aspects um, at the universities. So I know that that was very, very quick. Um, but one of the things that I do want to highlight for all of you is that we have a variety of information sessions um, happening over the summer, both virtually and also on campus. Um, so I'm just going to post a quick link in the chat to our website. Um, it's tau.gs at columbia.edu. I really recommend trying to come to one of our information sessions, um, either virtually or come to Columbia, get a tour of the campus. Um, we have a variety of different admissions reps dealing with all of these programs. We have current students in all three of our international dual degree programs that would be happy to talk to you as well. Um, and in those sessions, we go over um, the application process. We go into more, much more detail about the different majors available. We talk about financial aid, about student life, etc. cetera. Um, but thanks for letting me kind of really do this as, as quick as possible. I'm going to post my contact information in the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to put those um, in the Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Columbia University, please put it in the Q&A. My panelists and presenters, come on back. I'd love to see your beautiful faces. I have a quick question. We're going to do a quick speed round on this one. Okay, so super duper quick question. All right, I'll just ask if one representative from each school can answer. Okay, so what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Uh, first up, we have UMass Amherst. Have fun, <laughs> be realistic, and keep your list narrow so you have a, a clear choice. Awesome. Thank you. Franklin and Marshall College. Don't let your application be the first point of contact with each college you're applying to. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. The City University of New York. Take advantage of the revamp. Uh, websites that many colleges, hopefully all of them have offered uh, through the pandemic. They contain tons of information, including virtual tools. Awesome, thank you. Center College? Uh, one of the hazards of the college search is you get bombarded with information from schools telling you what you should care about before you've had a chance to think about what you care about. Pretend like you're building your own college and make a list of the things that you think are important. Awesome. Thank you. Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, I would definitely say visit as many schools as you can and also have a separate email address for your college um, email so you can keep those straight. Love it. And last but not least, Columbia University. Yeah, um, don't focus on where your friends are going, where they're applying and for parents watching, um, really do not focus on what your peers are doing. Um, think about what's most important for your student and students think about what's most important for you. I love it. Thank you so, so much to all of you. You heard it here first, everyone. These are the experts in the admissions process, right? So awesome advice. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, my panelists and presenters for being here. It is extremely important. What you do and, and showing up for these students and their support systems is extremely important. And my participants, my people in the audience, it is extremely important what you do as well, which is to show up because remember what I said, this is an appetizer session. So ultimately next to you need to figure out this main entree, right? So uh, please reach out to these representatives. They are absolutely awesome, awesome people. And visit the schools, check out their websites, all the good advice that they just gave you to figure out what school is the best fit for you. But with that said, I want to just thank you all so much for joining. Remember, when you close out this window, a very quick, the words are literally on your screen, very quick, I promise. Five question survey will appear. So please give us some feedback, sign up for more sessions. And again, if you would like to relive the fun, a recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash Jewish student fair. Again, thank you all so much. And I hope you have a great evening. Bye everybody.